Do you have a creative project, like say a short film that you've been tossing around for way too long and you always find yourself just talking about making it, but then when it's time to actually sit down and work on it, something else just seems to come up and the next thing you know, a week, a month, a year's gone by, you still haven't made any progress on the project? <gasps> Well, if that sounds like you, then this is probably going to be the most useful video I could ever make for you because for a while that was me too. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the mindset shifts that broke my chronic spell of procrastination. Then I'm going to tell you the easiest, most actionable way to just get yourself back on track. The thing that I do every day to stay focused and in that creative zone. First thing is a reality check. When we're in that procrastination state, we always have an excuse for why we're not working on a film or whatever project at any given moment. We're too busy with work, we're waiting for the perfect idea. Oh, I need this camera, I need that collaborator before I can even start working on this. The list just goes on. And these may be completely valid excuses, but before we can get out of this state of procrastination, we do have to acknowledge that they are still excuses because highly productive filmmakers, they have limitations of their own, but they look for excuses in the opposite direction. They find excuses in other areas of their lives to go to work on their films. The main reason that we indulge in excuses to procrastinate is fear, specifically fear of failure and fear of vulnerability. And to be honest, you should be afraid. Making a film or any kind of creative project is a ton of work. And then, you know, what if it sucks? What if you can't even finish it? You'll have wasted a ton of time, money, and energy on something. And not only that, this is going to be a public failure. And the fear of looking like a fool to others is a massive driver of our subconscious and conscious decision making. I understood the joke. Thank you. Of course. There's a reason that public speaking is always rated as like the number one fear of people, right? Don't want to look like a fool in front of everybody you know. Fortunately, there's an easy solution to the fear of failure, which is just scale down your project. Make something small enough that the fear of failing is manageable. You shouldn't be selling your house to make a feature film when you've never made a short before, you know? So for example, my first short films, I made them by myself, I edited them in iMovie, and the star actor was my dog. You know, small project, if I fail, not a big deal. And ideally, each new project you do pushes you out of your comfort zone enough to grow as a filmmaker, but not enough to just paralyze you with fear and start that procrastination cycle. And then there's the fear of vulnerability. Any film you make is gonna say something about you, the film, Maker, even if it's like a zombie apocalypse movie, there's going to be some of you just ingrained in it. And it can be actually really scary to put yourself out there to the world like that. But think about what Martin Scorsese says, you know, the most personal films are the most creative. And I think the beauty of storytelling is letting other people know that someone like you exists, somebody who thinks like you, feels like you, reacts to situations like you. And maybe there are other people like you who will be comforted and encouraged knowing that they're not alone. The more that you try to hide your true self from your films, know that the more bland your movie's probably gonna be. So give the people what they want, you. And fun fact, I procrastinated on making this video about procrastination. I actually spent a lot of hours writing it out like over a year ago, but I kept putting off filming it because I was afraid, oh, it's not relevant enough to this channel. It's not entertaining enough. It's gonna make me feel like some kind of wannabe self-help guru. You know, I felt vulnerable even telling people that this was an area that I was struggling with. And then a couple of weeks ago, I found this video script in my notes app and read through it and realized, oh, this is actually a really good script. And I've actually just done exactly the thing that this video is supposed to help you avoid doing because of the reasons this video lays out. I was afraid of doing this. So I said, okay, this is accurate, I'm going to have to go film this video. After the fear, the second horseman of the procrastination apocalypse is overwhelm. And in the beginning of any creative endeavor, it's incredibly easy to become overwhelmed by the big picture. There's just simply so much to do, much of which you don't even know how to do. So your focus turns to the difficulty of each and every problem and barrier that's in the way to making your film or whatever project. How am I gonna write this thing out? How am I gonna cast all these actors? How do I do the paperwork? The location is impossible to find. I suck at editing. I don't know how to do VFX. How am I gonna get anybody to watch it. It just goes on and on and on. All these problems that you're thinking about related to your project. And then what happens? You get filled with dread. You get exhausted at the mere thought of working on your film because now in your mind, the film itself has become an overwhelming web of problems that you'll never be able to untangle and solve. So whenever you get some free time to work on it, you don't think of an exciting project you get to have fun with. You think of a giant web of problems and you just huff an apathy and forget about it. You know, your brain pushes you towards something easy that it knows it can handle or get some dopamine reward from instead of this gigantic, impossible, anxiety-inducing problem. 
And if you want to overcome that overwhelm, you have to change the negative association in your mind that your film equals a huge mess of problems. And to do that, you literally have to write out on a notepad every problem and unanswered question you have about your film. Part of the overwhelm is just the sheer disorganization of your thoughts when you think about your film and the worry that you'll forget one of these problems that are bouncing around in your head, which just gives you this low level stress about the project at all times. But by writing them down, you clearly identify each problem, you clear out your headspace, you can start organizing the mess and reduce that anxiety. And you'll probably find that about a third of the problems that you identify are not that big of a deal or very easily solved and figured out. I suck at editing. I can find somebody to edit for me, or I can spend a few days watching YouTube videos and get the gist of it. Other problems are probably going to be combinations of multiple problems that can be broken down and simplified. And you may still have a lot of things on your list that you just have no idea how to deal with. But by clearly identifying the things about your film that overwhelm you, you have taken much of the power away from that overwhelming feeling. And instead of thinking about your film as a tangled mess of problems, you can start looking at it as just a piece of paper with a series of problems that you can go down line by line. And once you've checked all of them off, you'll have a finished short film. And that to me is much, much less intimidating and much less overwhelming. The third and final mental barrier is result oriented thinking. And a lot of times I used to procrastinate on a project or even worse, tank a whole project by focusing my thoughts on the end of the race instead of taking it step by step. So if your goal is to be a famous filmmaker or get into Sundance or get rich, it's ironically gonna be very hard to do that if that's the main thing that you're focusing on. Those thoughts lead to procrastination because the simple day-to-day -day process of making films seems so menial and small in comparison that it feels like you're just making a pointless drop in the bucket towards getting you to this lofty goal if that's what you're focused on. But nobody completes a marathon by making a handful of five mile long strides. They reach the finish line only by accumulating thousands of tiny steps one after the other. Instead of focusing on the finish line, you have to kind of keep your head down and find the joy and the fun in each individual step, right? The day-to-day -day process of making films. And if you're writing, maybe that's just finding a clever line of dialogue. If you're shot listing your shoot, it's the fun of visualizing how this scene would feel if a certain shot is done in a close up versus a wide. It's the process. This is what you have to focus on, these tiny little moments and the problems and tasks that are right in front of you on any given day. And once you can find the joy in the process of making a film, the pressure of the result completely fades away. And when that weight is lifted, it's much, much harder to procrastinate. And I think the tedious moments and the defeats in filmmaking and writing, all that stuff are still fun if you let them be because they test us. And the highs wouldn't be high if everything was easy and exciting. And every low that you hit is setting the stage for the next high. So it's a fun way to reframe things in your mind and get more excited about the day-to-day -day process of making films, which is 99.99% of your experience as a filmmaker. Struggling with a lack of motivation? Video projects too daunting to finish. Editing timelines, collecting dust. Ask your YouTuber about Motion Array. Motion Array makes elevating any video project a breeze. I'm no tech savvy video editor. In fact, I'm functionally illiterate. But Motion Array's templates are so easy to use, I'm already making text animations like this in a snap. Get video templates, stock video, stock music, and sound effects all in one convenient website. It even integrates with Photoshop, Premiere, and After Effects, so you never have to leave your favorite editing program to get the assets in your project. Say goodbye to procrastination. Everything's right here, folks. Why pay more for a handful of individual services when one Motion Array account will be your one-stop shop for all of your post video needs? It's membership-based, so sign up for a month, a year, and boom, you get access to everything. Use it whenever you want. Cancel any time. And once you cancel, the assets you use for those projects are still covered. Hmm. Oh yes. Sounds like a great value. And for a limited time only, my viewers get $50 off a Motion Array annual plan by signing up using the link in my description. Don't wait, sign up today. Thanks Motion Array. Okay, so those are the three mental barriers, but what can you start doing today to remedy your procrastination for good? Well, it's a very simple concept that I always tell myself when I'm at my most down and most unmotivated, no zero days. And this is something I stole from an awesome Reddit post that I'll link to in the description. But the idea is to get out of a funk and to keep your momentum moving, 
you just cannot have any zero days. And what is a zero day? A zero day is when you don't do a single thing towards making your film or accomplishing whatever you're trying to accomplish. So say it's 11.58 p.m. You haven't done anything for your film all day. You got two minutes. Open up a notebook, write one sentence of the script. Open up Google image search, find one reference image for a lookbook. Send one email or one text to a person you want to collaborate with on it. It can take one minute, but the point is you got something on the scoreboard for this goal of yours. You avoided a zero and success is made out of a massive string of consistent non-zeros. So you keep it up and finishing your film is inevitable. It's just a matter of when, not if. And doing that one small thing, it might feel like nothing. And if you're down on yourself, procrastinating, you might even question, what's the point of doing this? What's one push up gonna do if I wanna be Arnold Schwarzenegger? Right, wrong. But you gotta think, you know, if you're sailing across the ocean, say, and you change the angle of your rudder just one degree every day, you're gonna end up landing on a different continent. That's just how life works. And there's actually an excellent productivity book called Atomic Habits that has a similar idea, mainly that small habits have an incredibly large impact over the course of our lives. And we really tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in a short period of time, like a day, but underestimate what we can accomplish in a year if we're showing up every day, even in a very small way. So this non-zero thing, it's fundamental and it is a base. Once you build momentum, you'll find it becomes the minimum, but not the norm at all. You just have to have that baseline for yourself, that standard of no zeros, or you'll have no agency in your life. You'll just end up wherever your whims and, and random chance take you. But the last thing that I wanna leave you with is something that I found that opened my eyes to what procrastination actually is because I think having awareness of what's actually happening in your brain scientifically when you procrastinate is half the battle of stopping it. Procrastination is the primacy of short-term mood repair over the longer-term pursuit of intended actions. Which sounds like absolute nonsense, but in other words, procrastination is more about the immediate urgency of managing your own negative moods than it is about just getting on with your tasks. So the next time you find yourself opening up TikTok, starting to procrastinate, ask yourself, what negative mood or emotion am I subconsciously trying to manage by delaying my goals right now? That's it. Thanks for watching. Go make some films. See y'all next week.